Hey everyone, hope you're well and hope you're having a good start to the week. So today we're going to go over a few stories that I think might be of interest to you and then finish off the video with an update on my dividend portfolio and see what's happened over the last week. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around and my name's Ben. So the first story we're going to jump into isn't particularly about one specific company or another. It's more of a reminder about Rishi Sunak publishing the UK government's 2021 budget coming out on Wednesday the 3rd of March. It's kind of hard to say what's going to happen. There's been a lot of rumours flying around, but obviously nothing's confirmed until they actually publish it on Wednesday. We have heard that allegedly the government will be releasing a new style of bond, and this will be a greener future style bond. The idea being that the public can invest into this particular bond, knowing that the funds will go to reducing net emissions to around zero in the future. Moving over to the potential tax changes that are suspected to be coming through this. We're not sure what is happening, as I said, until it's published. And I will aim to post a link down in the description or the comments below that will link you to it once it is published. So remember to check that out. Despite this, there is one thing that non-pay workers have been advised to keep an eye out, and that is the potential increase on national insurance contributions for the self-employed. And this may also bring in additional measures for company directors for their employees. As I said, we don't know what is actually confirmed until the budget's released on Wednesday. I might do a video based around what the changes are and the potential impacts it might have on you. If you're interested in that sort of video, please comment below and let me know and we'll move over to the second story now. So jumping over to the first company update, we have a story from Allegan and Abvi who have submitted a application for drug approval for an eye drop that will treat presbyopia. And presbyopia is essentially a condition that reduces your eye's ability to focus on near objects, so nearsighted. The issue here is it's a general thing that onsets with age, it's why a lot of older people tend to have to wear glasses as they get older. If this drug is approved and does tend to work, it would be the first eye drop on the market that treats this particular condition or reduces the potentiality of it occurring as you get older. And a lot of the public, to my understanding, seem to be quite cautious about how they look and might not want glasses. So I can feel that this would be a good stream to tap into while also maintaining eye health in general. According to a study undertaken on around 750 individuals, it showed statistical significant improvement in near vision in low light conditions. Obviously, this is good to know for the general release of the drug that it has this advantage. And if it does get approved, this may be a keen thing for people that want to reduce the rate of potentially getting glasses in the future to have. In regards to market volume, in the US alone, there's around 128 million adults that are affected by near vision that could potentially be benefited or would have benefited in the past from this medication. So it's always a good news to know that there is potentially a large market area for this to move into. And we're now gonna move on to our third story and we'll come back and visit Amgen in the future and see how this story develops. For our third story, we have a bit of good news around COVID and a vaccine from J&J. The FDA seem to have approved their recent vaccine for emergency use. This makes it the third vaccine available in the US for treatment of COVID and the prevention of its spread. The J&J vaccine is a one dose vaccine and I believe it's more the traditional method of dead cell vaccines along those lines rather than the new RNA technique used by some of the other companies that have already released the vaccine in the US and UK. This new approval should help Joe Biden, who's made promises that every American will have a vaccine available by the end of July, and he'll be rolling this out as quickly as J&J can produce it. The new vaccine from J&J has been found to be around 72% effective, but only around 57% effective for the South African version of the virus. However, with deaths in around half a million and over 28 million people infected in the US with COVID, I'm sure that this is a keen thing to have rolled out as soon as possible, at least to reduce the spread and the harm that COVID is having on the population. And finally, we're going to jump over to a story from Main Street Capital, who have recently posted their Q4 earnings for the last year which showed a fourth quarter profit of 79.3 million. In the fourth quarter, they delivered a 2020 net investment income of 59 cents per share, which surpassed the average estimates in the area of around 50 cents a share. And as of December the 31st, 2020, Main Street Capital had net asset values of around 22.35 per share, compared with 23.91 on the past year in 2019. Main Street Capital also have around 31.9 million of cash or cash equivalents on hand if necessary, 
and they also have a credit facility of 511 million dollars available if they need to call upon those credit lines. As Main Street Capital is a monthly dividend paying company, it's a company that a lot of dividend investors like a fair bit because they can reclaim the value from the dividends on a steady pace. If you're interested to see how dividends would affect your portfolio, I have a video link down in the description below for you to check out that's just around dividends and how they work. However, in relation to Main Street Capital, their share price has actually risen since the pandemic started where it started at around $20.50 and is now sitting around the $36 mark. However, this still hasn't reached its pre-COVID levels of around $40.42. So it might be worth looking over the pricing of this to see if it's something that is still got value in it and you might be interested in. And that concludes the news. There are a few more stories linked down below for you to check out if you're interested. And obviously if there's anything you think that I've missed that's worth shouting about, drop it in the comments below and we can all have a chat about it. But we'll now move on to my portfolio update. And for the last week, we can see that I've had a portfolio value jump. However, this is mainly because I invested money into the account as opposed to actual growth itself. So we'll look at the growth value of the portfolio and see what's changed over the last week. So currently my portfolio value is sitting around £2,269, which is up from last week's value of around 2177 Again, if we compare the actual rate like we do every week, we can see that I have had a drop in return from last week. Last week I was sitting at around 4.06%, which was around £84.93p and I've dropped throughout the week down to 3.65%, and that's totaling just around 80% return. So I have lost around a fiver in return throughout the week. Despite this, because I added money into the account and bought some more shares, the value of the actual portfolio has gone up, and overall I'm still in the green, so it's not too bad in the sense of overall money made and lost. However, I keep it fresh every week for you, so you'll see if I do suddenly start losing a load of money, you'll be the, one of the first people to see. If we jump over to shares that I purchased, we can see that I bought one company, but I did buy it two times. The first time being the 25th, where I picked up two shares of PPL, and then the second time being the 26th, where I picked up a further three shares of PPL. This brings my total position of PPL to around seven shares, and PPL do have an next dividend date coming up soon in March, I believe it's March the 9th. So it's also a nice company to jump into now and reclaim the dividend coming up, which will be coming out in about April. Due to holding seven shares, I'd be expecting around £1.50 after it's converted into dollars and they've taken off the potential 30% holding. So it's a nice £1.50 to expect in April. So moving swiftly over to the dividends and having a look, there was a bit more activity in the dividend side of my portfolio last week. We did actually have four companies coming in and paying on the 23rd. This was starting with Abvi paying 24p for the 0.3 of a share that I hold of theirs, followed by Hormel Food, who paid out 6p for the 0.4 of a share that I hold of theirs. Then we had the lovely monthly dividend investing company, which was Realty Income, which paid a nice 42p for the three shares that I hold. And then rounding off the day, we had Omega Healthcare Investors. They paid out £1.21 for the three shares that I hold. Then finishing off the dividends for the week, on the 24th, we had Stag Industrials, who paid out a nice 29p for the four shares that I currently hold. So to total out all of the dividends throughout last week, pulled in around £2.50, so not a bad week for just holding stocks that overall have made me money. Like most of the time, in regards to sales, there's nothing really to say. I've got a couple of more recovery stocks that are still growing, and I'm potentially going to hold them a little bit longer before I start recouping some value from them but I will let you know when I do start to sell those stocks. If we jump over to what companies have given me the best deal in the sense of what's got the highest return in my portfolio, that would be winning this is ITV, who currently hold a 78% profit margin on my investment with them. However, this is being swiftly followed by Royal Mail, who are currently only at 65% profit. But if we turn the page and look over to the worst performing assets that I've got in my portfolio, this would be Dominion Energy, who are sitting at minus 20%, followed quickly by AT&T, who are down 18.5% in my portfolio since purchase. So kind of counterbalancing each other. However, it is nice to see that ITV, which I kind of bought as a recovery play, has grown so much. And I'm looking into it to see if it's a company that should be held more of a long-term holding rather than a recovery play with the intention to grow money back from it 
but I'll decide that once they decide if they're going to start paying a dividend or not. And that concludes the portfolio value change for the week. I am planning to do my full monthly update and go a bit more in depth on my portfolio changes and the sort of impacts these purchases and sales and dividends have made to my portfolio overall. So remember to subscribe to keep up to date with that. And if there's anything you do want me to include in that actual video, please comment below so I can make sure to do that as I'm making it shortly. And if there's anything you think you want to see in these mini updates as well, please comment down below and I can start to include them. At the moment, I am just doing the general growth main changes in the portfolio. However, if you'd rather me go into more in depth analysis with certain areas please let me know if you are interested in seeing what's happened in the past with my portfolio i do these weekly updates every single week and i have added a link to the playlist in the description down below so feel free to check that out however most importantly please remember to invest save and subscribe and i'll see you next week